excellent list. I want to talk about this courtesy of Janet, <laughs> Janet, courtesy of Mixed Mag. It's pretty interesting here. This is courtesy of Mixed Mag. It says the following Janet Jackson was spotted partying at London's Corsica Studios. Absolutely crazy, right? Um, it says here, pop diva Janet Jackson was spotted in South London, Cortico Studios, attending um, an Igloo night. Igor Records founder Alexander Nutt shared an image with a five Grammy Lawn winner saying, Can Janet Jackson came through, adding she was awesome. As she sings in the chorus of a hit track, Anytime, any place, I don't care who's around. Janet Jackson was also rumored to have been at Shoreditch House earlier the night before. The LD, the end founder of Natural Frequency Records, tweeted Janet Jackson was at the Igloo Records night at Cortico last night. That's how influential Alexander Nutt is, DJing in the label, partying, including the likes of Tony Touch, Mark, DJ Tara, Helen Star, Mr. Finger, and Aquia. Alexander Nutt has since added to a story said, I don't know where to start last night. Cusco Studio was truly something special. I'll write a proper post about it tomorrow once I get the photos available. But for now, I just want to send a huge thanks to OG Legend. Da, 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 da. DJ Tara tweeted um, a thread about the night, calling it amazing, concluding that it was Jane Jackson was there. And everyone's obviously going crazy about Janet Jackson being in this establishment. And it immediately made me think, it immediately made me think, immediately made me think of the most famous person that I've seen in a nightclub. And weirdly enough, these two famous people I saw in nightclubs, or maybe actually three, as it is, three famous people I saw in nightclubs were all in the same nightclub. So for a period of my life, I was obsessed with this nightclub in Dawson called The Alibi which was one of the best sort of like um, basement dive bars I've ever been to in my entire life, even to this day. And I kind of, when I go to different places around the world and I, I always do this, I'm not sure if you guys do the same thing, but I always kind of look for dive bars and I'll kind of search for one that's got like one star to three stars and go to the shittiest one I can go to. And usually it's a hell of a good time. You can usually pick up from there. You can usually hear some good music, get chatting to some fucking funky locals and stuff. And it's just, you know, can add a different sort of layer and a texture to your, holiday you know that you're out on so I'm always been you know obsessed with dive bars in general but you know with my love for the yellow bite kind of extended over there so um I met three or bumped into three of the most famous people that I've ever done in that kind of establishment which is absolutely wild but it does make sense because at the time the yellow bite was maybe the number one destination to kind of go to if you visited London even though some of the parties weren't the best and whatever it may be just kind of being there and being seen and being around these certain people was definitely a major part of people's kind of um, London experience and the first person who I saw there was none other than Harry Styles Harry Styles I don't know how old he was how long ago it was it was very very long time ago but the one thing I remember about him is he was incredibly incredibly nice like we weirdly nice like he was just there with some friends having some drinks hanging out at the bar chatting up to some chatting up some girls or the girls chatting him up and the one thing i noticed because i remember i was sitting in next to the bar one thing i noticed was that he made time for everybody and after i remember kind of seeing what a celebrity life is like in real life and then what see you know basically realizing that i'm definitely not cut out for that lifestyle because every time he was kind of getting into a conversation or enjoying a drink or sharing a laugh someone will come for a picture come for a picture come for a picture and it wasn't even at the times where i think social media is probably worse than it is ever right in terms of people being intrusive and feeling like you know if they see you you kind of owe them um the, the time to kind of stop and kind of give them attention but back then people were even harassing him and stuff and the alibi was known for people getting completely off their heads so you can imagine somebody completely off their heads remembering to kind of get out their phone take a picture it's not well the place is really dark the flashing go off all that sort of nonsense so but one thing i did see with him is that he stopped and made time for everybody nothing was a chore the entire night he was incredibly nice he even got us some drinks or no he bought us some shots actually when we were at the bar so that was pretty decent and then the other person who i saw there um quite soon after was um what's her name i've got i keep forgetting her name white lady jessica alba i saw jessica alba randomly in the alibi she looked very understated she kind of had her hair up in the ponytail i remember she was wearing glasses i think she wears glasses day to day i think if i'm not mistaken and she had like a coat on and she was coming down the stairs as I was going up and people were kind of saying hi to her and stuff. And one thing I realized straight away with these Hollywood types, especially when it comes to the females, she looked incredibly attractive in real life, probably more so than in pictures because she looked really understated, really understated, really underdressed. Like I said, hair back, ponytail, on in the ponytail with glasses on, wearing a big jacket. She wasn't dressed in some bodycon dress with some, with her bum kind of out and stuff. No, she just looked very, very, very plain looking and she still stood out maybe because i recognized her face straight away but she stood to her face was like wow duh, that woman's incredibly attractive and then boom i realized oh shit that's jessica alba 
And then the other person I saw in Yalabai, the most famous person I saw, he was actually in there filming a scene for a for a movie that I don't remember which one it was, but essentially in the movie, he kind of comes into a club and he's sort of like spotting people and looking for somebody. And that was, whatever that movie is, I'm thinking of Jake Gyllenhaal's in, that was actually filmed in Yalabai. And he had like a guy behind him who had just like one camera. They were just basically trying to get an authentic shot of him going for a club. Uh, but unfortunately, he's too famous. So everyone was kind of saying hi to him, but they were probably managed to able to chop up the clips and make it kind of work. So essentially, yeah, that's what I saw. I saw Jake Gyllenhaal, the Yalabai, and he kind of walked walking in and he actually did, spud me for the scene but i was obviously looking at the camera like you know with my eyes as big as cds having done probably three and a half grams of mdma or something so i probably didn't make the cut for the movie but he definitely did give me a little bit of a pound but it was in this, i don't know what scene it was it was some scene in some movie that he's in where he's in a nightclub and he's kind of parading through whatever maybe if you know it you probably be able to tell me in the comments but those are the two most famous people i saw and again three harry styles jessica alba and jake Gyllenhaal all in the alibi all in one place one bloody place um so that was pretty cool to see so for the most part london is like that do you know i mean it's a it, as bad as as bad as i complain about the clubbing scene and the fact that it's not an all-night city really most places close at four i think corsica is another one like four that closes at six so it's another rare one i think every area has one place that closes at 6 a.m but they're kind of far out. You kind of have to commit to going to those kind of places. You can't really club hop and stuff. And after six, everything is basically done. Basically, people return back to normal life. But the one thing that is really amazing about our club night or our clubbing scene in general is a variety of what we have available. There's so much variety out there from... I speak to someone the other, the other day you could go out essentially in parts of london and go and basically rave to metal music you can go rave to pop punk music go rave to um what do they call it uh reggae go live to, go rave to bashment grime you know hip-hop uk rap whatever afro beats afro house um I'm a piano. There's loads of nights out there catering to every type of music genre that you want. But it's just, you know, the options in terms of staying out late aren't really there. Maybe they're in sketchy places or whatever maybe. But in terms of actual genres that they cover, there's nothing better than London. So it does make complete sense why a incredibly talented artist like Janet Jackson with the musical legacy that she has would be attracted to come down to London and kind of see the vibe and see what it's about. Because imagine, someone said she was at Shoreditch House. So... Uh, I don't know if she was there earlier that night or if she was there the night before, but still, she was in Shoreditch House having a nice bougie night out. They have some decent DJs that play there. Um, I've been there a few times on, on like Friends recommendations and whatnot, and it's a pretty decent place to go and hang out in, especially if you've got some money. I'm assuming it's probably some fun. So to leave the place like that and to go to a grimy club like Corsica in the depths of South London, that means you're really about this life. That means you really want to experience, you know, London club scene for real, for real and to go to an igloo night records too kind of shows it so definitely i'm not surprised somebody like her would be into that kind of thing i'm not really surprised in the slightest but it definitely was something that i am um that i'm happy that these people got to enjoy and got to see no 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 way about it let me see, what's this to dj tara fred what is this let's see the, the the fred by this person called dj tara but yeah i'm not surprised to see janet jackson out there in london enjoying herself because you know we have some of the best club nights in the world actually in the world maybe not the best clubbers maybe not the best clubs maybe not the best clubbing scene in general but in terms of the flipping nights now we smash it man no one can come close to us i don't care no one can come close to us um what was i gonna say here why do i recognize this lady in the middle i don't know why Okay, I'm not a recognized person, but I, rec I do recognize that lady in the middle. I don't know why I recognize her, to be honest. This one here with the hair. I have no, no idea, but I do recognize her from somewhere. But hey, maybe I'm just bugging out. Maybe I'm bugging out. But anyway, we move.